things. So when Lachlan comes to me and her son is approaching 300 pounds as a teenager, uh, he, she's not alone. She has uh, he gets accolades for the coaches at his, on the football team for being a very you know critical part of that team. But uh, the weight loss is actually really important to her and to her son. So when people, you know, I, I have lots of po folks who say, you know what, Doc, I really don't want to lose weight. It's too hard, and I, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, I know I'm never going to be a size and then fill in the blank. But uh, I'm here to tell you it is incredible how much this predicts not just the quality of your life, but it actually predicts mortality. So, Lachlan, if you had to guess what was one, what's one of the biggest predictors of um, – death uh, for a diabetic, what do you think that would be? In my case, my mm -hmm. blood sugar being high. It's t Yeah, your blood sugar is a huge predictor of uh, whether or not you're going to, you're making inflammation on the insides of those blood vessels or not. Um, the, <laughs> the, the other part, though, is when I ask this question out to audiences and to my parents, the first thing they'll tell me is their cholesterol. And, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, it's, you know, I need to get my cholesterol down because it's killing me. Um, but to this date, uh, and here is a slide that shows the reference for this. To this date, we know that uh, there is not one uh, study that connects the, the death of a patient with their total cholesterol or their LDL cholesterol. So, again, looking at the overall cholesterol numbers and predicting heart disease, um, that isn't nearly as powerful as if they have something called metabolic syndrome. So these were um, uh, patients that were followed for 25 years, and they were looking at people who have um, all-cause deaths, or this column, the first column, and uh, cardiovascular mortality, meaning they died either of a heart attack or a stroke. And when you look at the difference between these columns, the red column are the people with metabolic syndromes, and the blue column are those without metabolic syndrome. And you say, well, what, what the heck is metabolic syndrome? <laughs> metabolic syndrome is a collection of symptoms, but number one, it's obesity. Uh, it's a waistline that if you're a, um, if you're a male, it's more than 40 inches. If you're a female, it's more than 35 inches. So it's not necessarily is what's the scale say, uh, although that's another way to measure. The obesity was measured by, by the, the waistline. It's a, the syndrome also includes that their uh, fasting blood sugars were elevated, greater than 100 fasting blood sugars. So again, you folks out there that are testing your blood sugars, this is why you're testing. I want to know, did you empty your liver last night? Did you empty the stored glucose from last night? Um, the next one is that they get a uh, low good cholesterol, a low HDL cholesterol, um, and the numbers are written there. Uh, high blood pressure is also on that checklist, and I think this is super tiny. You have to really be paying attention to notice that your blood pressure is more than 130 over 85. Uh, that's, people don't feel that. That's not symptomatic. Um, the next one is the that your triglycerides are greater than 150. Again, that's a blood test, but I just want uh, folks to know that you can check the obesity, you can check your morning fasting blood sugars, and you can check your blood pressure all at home. And if you have two of the th two of these five, uh, you have the diagnosis of uh, a metabolic syndrome. So moving on, the the biggest predictor that I like to point out in patients is that. Uh, these patients were followed for 25 years, and they are not like Lachlan. They do not have diabetes. They are non-diabetic. Their morning fasting sugars were less than 100. Uh, they were less than 126, but these were even less than 100. They did not have metabolic syndrome. But what they did measure for 25 years was their insulin levels. So they divided the folks, again, males and females, for 25 years. They divided them. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, this was just men. I'm sorry, it's not females. Uh, into five different groups. And the folks in the lowest, uh, this green line here, the lowest line were those who don't have, uh, had the lowest amount of insulin. The folks, uh, as you took these lines upward, the highest level uh, of insulin also correlated with the highest death rates. And again, uh, the, this is um, the heart disease was one thing they were measuring, but they were looking at, actually, they weren't uh, 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 
cardiovascular heart disease is what they were looking at. That could include a death in the study, but it could include a heart attack that didn't kill them. It could include, include a stroke that didn't kill them, or it could, could include a, a death from one of those. But I think it's just a powerful statement saying, hey, you can check your morning fasting blood sugar. You can check and keep it under 100. But if you have high insulin, you are at risk. And that is why we have you checking blood sugars. It takes your body and it puts an, a flame in it. The insulin is what causes the heart disease. There are several you know, uh, lectures out there and blogs out there about people who are uh, thin on the outside but fat on the inside. And you're like, well, doc, how do I know? Do I need an MRI? I'm like, no, check your Dr. Boz ratio. And you say, what, what? So this Dr. Boz ratio is one way to look at insulin. And I'm going to go through that um, because I think it's such a powerful teaching point to be able to say you do not need to rush to the doctor. Yes, keep a relationship with your doctor, but don't expect them to lift the whole, uh, do all the work. It's your life and nobody is caring about your health as much as you. Um, okay, maybe Lachlan, I care about her health <laughs> about as much, but uh, most of your doctors are not going to dial in and give you this kind of intense caring uh, uh, advice. I need her insulin to, to be able to be lower, and that means we need to lower her blood sugars. So when we look back at her, um, her ratios uh, that she just, uh, she doesn't, she hasn't been measuring the ratios yet. She's just been checking the numbers and I haven't taught her about the Dr. Boz ratio. Uh, we're doing that tonight. <laughs> and um, it, it comes to starting with patients saying, why should you check your blood sugar? You should check your blood sugar because caring about this is step one. And if your morning fasting sugars are above 100, I guarantee there's high insulin in your system. Um, that uh, when you look out at the, the data that's out there, uh, I've had a few people write in to say, does the Dr. Boz ratio, is, did you just make that up? <laughs> and I'm like, well, let me show you how that came about. So um, when you look at the literature out there for- Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.